Hey, welcome back, Vision fans. Ready Player Will here. Finally reviewing Sweetheart Salir. Been out for over a week now. I wanted to give some time to let her really set in, analyze the stats, see how the AI worked without jumping to any conclusions based upon what I saw in the kit. But she's pretty straightforward. It actually did end up being exactly what I thought it was. So let's jump into the review. Uh, basically going to do a character overview. I added something new. It's called the report card. Basically where I can give some kind of grades and talk more generally about the character while also going over some of their stats. I'm going to do a class and job overview and then notable esper and vision card synergies as well as weapon optimization so that esper and vision card section is going to change just a little bit where i used to do a big deep dive and everything that goes well now i'm just going to focus on one or two because at this point there's enough variety between selection that really depends on the meta and what you're facing anyway so jumping into it character overview brand new ice unit uh great ice is like dead right now but, that being said, that doesn't make her a good or bad character. Maybe it's not her time in the game. Job, she's an Energist, a second in the game behind Garvel, but also Time Mage and Black Mage. Weapons are gloves with equips of hat cloth and accessory. Move of three, jump of one. The resists are pretty normal. Weak to fire, uh, strong against wind. And then the resistance is strong 10% to pierce and magic. Uh, flat on missile and slash. And then a weak 10% to strike. So overall, it's a pretty good starting point. Uh, you don't like to see characters with a lot of negative resists right out of the gate. But outside of that, the status ailment resistance is really interesting. Basically immune to Berserk and Sleep, 50% on both. 10% to Confuse, which is really, really interesting. Because we know how powerful the King Mont 2B synergy has been in a lot of team play. The fact that she can both mitigate uh, King Mont's Berserk status effect, as well as 2B's often used Confusion status effect, at least sometimes, is really interesting. So... Getting even further into the report card now, this is a fun thing I put together. I've effectively determined a few parameters here based upon what the DPS role is, uh, by and large, in the game. Effective HP, I'm sorry, let me explain what this is. Effective HP is basically their HP adjusted for how much damage they really take of a certain attack type in order to get to zero. So what that basically means is, let's say someone has 5,000 HP. Well, it doesn't mean they take 5,000 damage. You have to also take into account that they have a defense stat, and if they have like 50% slash resist, and it's a slash attack, they're gonna take you know less damage, so the HP is gonna be bigger. This is effectively an adjustment for that. So I have total effective HP, uh, physical and the magical. So total effective HP is really a B plus. So she's not the greatest in the game, but she's certainly better than most and does have some good physical bulk as it stands. And we'll get into that in a moment. The physical HP is really the A minus. That's really what carries her. And it's because she does have a physical barrier that she can cast on herself via the, the Chi uh, field that odds on the energy sub job and then the magic hp is a b it's not bad it's not great it's not average it's above average but it's whatever so essentially and bear with me here for the big data dump this is the table that i've put together to manage this uh Salira, you don't need to know a whole lot of this obviously you can pause and read through it if you want but i'm gonna walk you through it so just eyes on me here long story short i've essentially done you know taken out tanks here so this is the dps cast if you will by and large and the effective magic hp for a lot of the top DPS, ranges anywhere in like 4,000 and above. So she's at 3,300, which is actually kind of low, but it is higher than most DPS, just not some of the top tier DPS. So magic HP isn't bad, it's not great, no innate SPR, it's whatever. But the physical, at least, same kind of idea, she's still at 3,300 compared to a lot of the other DPS that are in the uh, 4,000s, but the fact that she has access to that shield as well as the innate defense really goes a long way to getting her effective HP higher, uh, really well-rounded overall. So uh, if you were to, you know, just kind of cleaning this up a little bit, you can read through this if you want. It may not mean a whole lot to a lot of you, but all you need to know is she is kind of bulky, to be honest, at least more so than your average DPS, uh, but maybe it's not so much in the magic way that could be given the Helena meta, which is going on at the moment. Uh, outside of that, the primary stat, the magic stat's an A. It's out of this world. It's an amazing magic stat. If you're comparing her to Garvel and, and Helena, and you put on their sub jobs, which are most often used, her magic tops out at 778 without any kind of equipment or vision cards or espers, uh, much higher than Garvel and even higher than Helena. So that's a real big feather in her cap that her magic stat is that high. For agility, this hyper vitality passive is always going to be equipped it's one of the best in the game it bumps up her agility to 72 72 which is garvel levels of agility and you know we can easily hit over 100 but that's usually with the black rose external help on a vision card so regardless that's a very fast amount of agility to start the fight which is fantastic and her limit braid actually will help her get more turns as well we'll get to that soon in terms of accuracy accuracy is actually slightly above average but i give it an a because detonation blast is a guaranteed hit one of the most often used things in her kit on the energy sub job so overall accuracy is not a big concern it's an a anytime you have a weapon or an 
ability that is that potent that gets used that often. Uh, they, uh, and we're going to look into it. <laughs> Sorry, forgot about this. Uh, Average is 153 currently for a total accuracy. Obviously, the top of the list can get much, much higher. She's not middle of the pack because it does skew pretty high once you get to the top. But 163 means she has a 10% chance more to hit on average than the average character and that's okay but like yeah detonation blast evasion is a c she's not an evade unit she's uh she has like four percentage points above average but uh, there's nothing in her kit that makes her an evade unit so don't even consider it the movement i have it as a c as well if only because move of three jump of one is straight average and there's nothing in her kit that you really use that often that gives her any kind of enhanced mobility so it's a c nothing wrong with that uh, in terms of passives, it's a B minus. Overall, the passives are rather lackluster. Hyper Vitality is really carrying it, being one of the best in the game, but the overall passives don't lend a lot to creativity or different kinds of builds. We'll get into that soon. The counter abilities is an A, though, because she does have perfect physical evade. So that's why when we talk about how tanky can she be, that's part of the consideration as well, that she can evade some physical attacks 100% of the time. Uh, the overall kit, though, is a C plus. Uh, I'm really not a fan of, like, the kit as far as it goes in the game, because I don't know how long it'll last outside of just being strong statistically per se that being said though that the final grade is a b plus even though i don't like the overall kit just because it doesn't tailor make to what i like to see in characters uh she's a damn good character even if the meta doesn't allow for her to be at the moment general thoughts extremely extremely straightforward dps uh very little sub job versatility if any at all we'll get into that soon not many passives to change the profile to build around that's what i was talking about like you obviously can gear certain characters to skew high for HP or defense or enhance an ability or do something to adjust the luck stat or accuracy. She's got none of that. It, it's it's very, very one-trick pony. Uh, jobs don't allow for teammate buffing either, so she's very much A to B when she walks in and moves into the team fight, which is a demerit in my opinion because as these map changes, uh, some maps just don't cater to that kind of playstyle, so you sometimes need that ally buff, and you can get it with a TMR, but it really helps to have it in the N8 kit. The damage is enhanced by an innate 25% spirit penetration, which is awesome for eating through magic tanks. Uh, fantastic physical bulk, as we already went over. The physical shield, the 10 and 8 defense, and solid resist, no negatives, except for strike, and well-rounded statistically. Uh, fits extremely well into the ice cast, given that there's a lack of strong magic users. Obviously, Medina and Rosa exist, and although Medina does have her X job, by and large, doesn't have enough to really have the same staying power in the current state of the game. And Rosa, very, very niche. So uh, when it comes to putting some vision cards on some of these characters or disguising what your magic stat might be in a guild war, she's a nice addition to this to, well, to round out that ice cast. So get into the class job overview here. The passive abilities, Hyper Vitality, the best one here by far. But the other two, Chief Low Expansion and Magic Level Up, they're the same ability, the same thing as Garvel. There's nothing new about either of them. And the other two are Time Age related. It's a Null CT change and a Speed Cast. To be honest, she's not going to use Speed Cast almost ever. It would really only be on haste if that's the case. So her support kit is really non-existent. It's basically just a bunch of magic buffs. And then obviously the, the agility and dexterity there. For counters, as we talked about, Hyper Reactivity is the 200% chance to physical evasion, which is absolutely amazing. Always keep this on. But in terms of the main job, the energy, we've seen this before with Garvel, but we haven't seen what the X upgrade has been. And this is a pretty good upgrade, to be honest. Chi, Super Shot, don't sleep on that. That's an amazing ability. The reason being, once you get into some of these harshly defined metas where it's a ton of magic or a ton of slash, being able to throw in an extra damage type into the mix makes it that much harder to gear against. So for those people that are going full, you know, magic resist builds, if you can suddenly get them with a missile attack, it's going to do way more damage than they can possibly build for or anticipate. So the X upgrade makes it a higher potent ability. 165 in the modifier, only 12 AP with some good range. Like that's why this ability is so strong. It's just super versatile. Twin Chi Rupture gets an upgrade too, where the AoE is extended a little bit, and it's a decrease in AP. And screw me, I forgot to mention it, but we can talk about it on the stats on that report card screen. Her starting AP, because she's such a uh, higher level than Garvel, actually is pretty decent. She starts the fight off with a little over 100 AP just in base, not including any kind of additions from the espers and whatnot so the twin chi rupture obviously she benefits from the decrease in ap but she's actually going to be able to cast these a little more frequently as well the chi barrier one of the best for this class detonation blast is absolutely amazing guaranteed hit aoe 34 ap but cross discharge actually might be the shining star of this kit it's basically the same kind of range and, and damage output in terms of modifier as detonation blast but it's cheaper and it's a magic buff for her for three turns so even though detonation blast obviously is kind of garble's bread and butter because of how you know how much it packs of a punch cross discharge is probably going to be hers which uh, i don't think a lot of people saw coming in terms of the sub job this is really niche it's only if you want a double hit in my opinion where it's another missile attack which is really great but um you know 
To be fair, the other sub jobs aren't great either, so you really could keep this on and use it fairly reliably. It's just a matter if you want to try to potentially chain or not, getting that double hit in there. In terms of the sub job, Time Age to me is probably the only other thing you would put on here, and it's literally only because of haste. She has no access to quicken, and the rest of this kit quite frequently is great for some PvE content, but for like Guild Wars and some of the arena, you're probably not going to see use outside of putting some haste on. And the Black Mage sub-job, unfortunately, is a job that's really only here for statistics at this point to help round out some of the base stats of a character. Because otherwise, the kit is, I don't want to say power crept, but it's almost useless, given the amount of insta-cast things, where it's the Energist sub-job, and the Arithmetician, and Helena's class. There's just so much that has more potent magic power with less downsides of a cast time that you're just never going to use it straight up. So, ignore it, unfortunately. In terms of the limit break, this is a good limit break. Unfortunately, the, the WTV Calc website isn't fully updated with the range of when you upgrade this. As far as I know, the ability is increase CT 250 when you max it, which means she gets her next turn 25% faster. The dispel all buffs and haste for a target is pretty good for a tank. Uh, obviously, that's who she's going to be attacking initially in the fight. And it does have good range and is relatively cheap, kind of in line with uh, at least most of her other abilities. So this is, is not the worst ability. It's not my favorite, but obviously has a role depending upon what you put on an enemy tank in terms of buffs. For the TMR, not great. This is one of those ones kind of like Howlet, where on paper it could be amazing, where sure, for one turn you get like no magical hit, but to time this with the map and to use it properly, and it's only one use, which means once you've used it, you essentially only have the stats from the cloth. And to be fair, they're probably a lot better cloths in the game to optimize what you're trying to go for so it's super niche but uh, unfortunately and then finally the master ability this is where she gets the spirit t penetration from so that's innate which is really awesome for the notable vision card synergies it was the release this week of uh this ice snowstorm dragon freeze i call them fries just because it's easier to spell and, and mention uh this is amazing this literally is a card that's going to take her to another echelon although even the balance of the game isn't meant for her at the moment this card really does do a lot it adds an extra four defense which adds to her bulk it's got good stats overall for hp the unit effect is magic up so it makes her even more magically potent the ice attack modifier is great for the party when you're making mono ice comps she also benefits obviously and critical damage is a dps buff as well there's not a ton of access to those in the game outside of like titus's necklace and a few other places so getting an increase in critical damage really makes people smack when they land that crit damage and then the increase hp that extra bulk to her makes her even more physically tanky than she already is so really freaking awesome card overall in terms of the notable esper synergies really pick and choose here freezes fries freeze fries is definitely the number one for me it does have a big downside though of the elemental weakness of fire being 10 percent down where obviously king mont and even the monster vx upgrade coming and rain and there's a whole bunch of things that deter you from using this unit and this doesn't help it but in terms of the board and the stats obviously 15 agility is pretty pretty average but it's not the worst for a magic user so that's a check there and then ice attack 25 fire resistance can at least like hedge against this innate 10 percent but you're wasting a lot of slots to do so it's got magic resistance magic attack increased spr which is great because she doesn't have a lot of innate magic resistances so fries does do a fries does do a lot to enhance her as a character bahamut's also the absolute go-to just for the agility then the board the human killer magic resistance magic attack and strike resistance which she is 10 percent weak to white winter moogle will get a uh, three-star upgrade right now he is kind of power crap but this board is basically like a cheaper version of fries in my opinion where it's an increase in magic attack magic resistance and fire resistance but overall obviously statistically inferior and then siren underratedly good one for me and the reason why i like this one because it has innate fire 10 percent strength so we'll give her a little bit of an edge if there are still some king mont comps lingering in the, the future obviously does have great agility up there with bahamut and then 25 percent slashes is so when you're talking about a really physically frontline to mid-range fighter being able to have that innate slashes just is going to go a long way for her and finally diabolos obviously honorable mention it's a great magic esper uh uh, not much to say. It has slash resistance of 20% also, so that, that's a great feather in its cap, kind of similar to Siren. Has the magic attack up and the increase of magic. Obviously doesn't benefit from the dark attack, but still a great Esper considering it's one of the few three stars that's really applicable. Weapon optimization. It's really just the dark gloves. The, even in JP, as far as I can tell, it's the only weapon that's out there. And it's not a bad weapon, but it's so straightforward. It's literally just magic attack up, where a lot of these, you know, rods for some of the staff users, you get evocation boost, and you have certain element type up, and you have... 
uh, the magic resistance penetration on the Cypress pile, and there's different weapons you can put on to optimize how you want the character to work. There's really none here. It's just the dark gloves. There is a universe where you maybe sacrifice just a little bit due to the modifier in terms of gearing flexibility, where you put something like the Soul of Thamasa on her, where uh, yes, the magic stat is less. Yes, you lose the modifier, but you get magic resistance penetration in exchange for it, in addition to uh, potentially SPR or magic and the uh, magic resistance on it. And then finally, same with the Galmia Cloak. You're going to lose some of the DPS, but hypothetically, she does get SPR, which she doesn't have an alias, so you will at least have that. And you still keep the magic stat relatively high, even though you lose the modifier. Not optimal, but like, there are options. You can play with them. So uh, that's it in a nutshell. She's in. I'm not even a circuit code. She's not that interesting of a unit. She is a good unit, but it is super straightforward and unfortunately not really applicable at this stage in the game. I do foresee some staying power, at least just because statistically she does seem to be at the top of the charts for a while. And obviously the addition of the vision card might help some of the ice men to come back. And she will be a critical part of that, considering that Medina and Rosa kind of take a back seat. But overall, interesting character. I'm not in any rush to build her. I'm definitely not using her right now, even with the map catering to ice attack up. It's just... There's still too many downsides, unfortunately. But hopefully those of you that are playing with her are enjoying her. Love to see some feedback in the comments and see how she plays out in the future. So thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll talk to you all soon.